We finally get some alone time with the ZR2 Bison Colorado. So we're gonna take a look at it from front to back and see what makes this thing special starting in the front. But we have this nice pass through, they call this the flow tie as found on the ZR2. Moving down to the bumper is where it starts to get special. This is ZR2's AEV bumper. So this is a metal bumper, it has a plastic guard over it currently, but metal out here. And then you have a couple plastic guards here. Some fog lights down below, AEV uh, imprinted logo here on the license plate cover. And then down below, you have these red tow hooks that you can find on the ZR2. They obviously follow into the ZR2 Bison. Down below, we have these boron steel skid plates, which we put to use today in this exact vehicle. So they work very well. This truck is still with us today and uh, still running flawlessly. Moving down the side of the vehicle, we're gonna move on to the wheels and tires. So these are 35 inch Wrangler Territory mud terrains. And the 35s come on the Bison, 33s come on the ZR2 base. And these are AEV wheels. These are beadlock capable right now. They just have some showy little plastic screws in them just for show. So nice beadlock wheels there. Down below we have these nice running boards or sliders. We use these as well today. They have a little bit of scratching underneath, not too bad, but we did utilize these sliders quite a bit today. Coming on down back the vehicle, we have another 35 in the back. 35s on the rear as well. Again, those AEV, real nice 18 inch rims that have a B-lock capability. Moving on back, sticker package, ZR2 Bison. And coming back to the very back, we have our ZR2 Bison high clearance steel bumper. Not only do we get the sticker that says ZR2 Bison on the rear quarter panel, we also get this nice AEV sticker or emblem on the back of the tailgate that has that bowl, the logo for AEV on the rear. Tow hooks in the back, hitch receiver here, as well as your hitch connections. And then if we move up to the front suspension, we can take a peek at what makes this truck so special. So the ZR2 gets the DSSV shocks. This gets the DSSV shocks, but it also gets what they call jounce shocks or jounce uh, dampers. You can see this massive, massive shock back here that has three different reservoirs, and that's just everything that's working inside this Multimatic DSSV shock. If you move backwards, we have this Multimatic jounce shock, and this is pretty much just a hydraulic bump stop. And so when the suspension is at full compression, that actually gives you a little bit of stiffer uh, compression at the end of your stroke to make it so your car isn't bottoming out as hard. So that is special to the AEV. They get those jounce shocks that help when you are under full compression. That is a one up over the normal ZR2. So if you want just a little bit more off-road capability, the Bison is gonna give you that in the suspension department. Interior on the Bison is relatively the same to the normal ZR2, but a few differences are the AEV branded all weather floor mats and then moving up this perforated leather seat, you get this AEV stitched headrest has that nice logo embroidered on the headrest, driver side as well as passenger side. Nice gray leather with this nice contrast stitching on the gray all the way around the seat as well on the center armrest as well on the center console and across that dash with the ZR2 logo over on the passenger side. So mechanically, the Bison is similar to the base ZR2 in the fact that it has a 2.7 liter high output turbocharged motor that produces 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque, and it's also paired to the eight-speed transmission. Now this Bison has the same drive modes. We have our off-road modes, our normal, our off-road, tow haul, terrain, as well as Baja. I'm gonna go into Baja, press that acknowledgement, switch to Baja, and then I'm gonna show you guys how launch control works you have your uh, Baja mode on, foot foot all the way into the brake, foot all the way into the throttle. It'll stop at about 3000 RPM, flash at you, and you are ready to launch. And then I'm gonna launch on three, okay? All right, foot full on the brake, pedal down. We are halfway through our one hour drive from Palm Springs out to Johnson Valley off-road area. So right now we are in the 2500 HD ZR2 Bison. And this is a little bit different than the ZR2 2500 HD that we drove yesterday in the towing test. This one has uh, about a $9,000 package yep. on top of the already off-road capable ZR2. And I think this thing looks extremely aggressive. Those front and rear bumpers really do make a massive difference. That front bumper is winch ready. It is ready for you to drop in any choice of winch you want. 
So if you are gonna be taking this off-road, might as well throw a winch in there. It's ready to go. You don't have to get any aftermarket bumpers, any mounts, nothing like that. But Colorado does have different suspension from the ZR2 Bison to the ZR2, or from the ZR2 to the ZR2 Bison. Those have uh, the same DSSV shocks, but they have what they call jounce bumpers, pretty much hydraulic bump stops inside yep. the shocks. Or sorry, not inside the shocks, but um, in addition to the shocks. And so I'm excited to see what those are like, but these shocks that are on this truck are the same as what's on the ZR2. So the Bison doesn't get any special suspension treatment. So, Mechanically on the HD, yeah. it's all the same. Yep, everything's about the same, other than some uh, add-ons like front rear bumper, skid plates, things of that sort. So, so the base ZR2 with the gas motor starts at around $70,000, 69,000 and some change. When you add on the diesel, that is a $9,500 option, as well as the Bison package, which is $9,000, $9,200, you're looking at right around $96,000 as equipped. Is that right? Yeah, and this will have the power retracting steps, a technology yep. package, yep. Uh, fifth wheel slash gooseneck prep on this truck. So the Duramax and the AEV it runs about $19,000, and then we have an additional $5,000 of options on this truck. Yeah, yeah. So like what Scott was saying is we have other options outside of those two big big choices you can get is the 6.6 .6 Duramax as well as the Bison package. So those are the two major ones and then there's little tiny add-ons that you can just you can just keep adding on to the price. Sunroof, everything. Yeah, sunroof's a thousand bucks, uh, technology package, multi, the multi-flex tailgate comes with the Bison. Yeah, it right? comes in there. It shows under the uh, Bison AEV spec sheet that the multi-flex tailgate's included in that. Yep. As equipped, this truck is touching a hundred thousand dollars in some in some cases. It's a uh, it's an expensive truck. So overall ride quality, like we're about an hour into this drive so far. We have 20 more minutes. And right off the get, I mean, for this to be a 2500 HD and have a have 35 inch mud terrains and to have a higher suspension and just everything that's working against it, it still rides so good and has very little cabin noise. So we did our decibel reading again on this truck. We did it yesterday on the 2500 ZR2. Uh, the HD ZR2 that we were towing with. And that one yesterday was 67, 73. Yeah, 67 cruising at 60 miles an hour and then 73 under full throttle from 60 miles an hour. Today, 66.6 .6 while cruising. And then it went up to about the same, right? 73. 72.8, so as near as makes no difference, 73. Yep, so whether you're towing an 8,000 pound trailer behind the ZR2 or just driving a ZR2 Bison, you're looking at right around the same road noise inside the cabin. So that's a pretty good feat for something so large. I mean, this thing just rules the road. Getting into this truck, I mean, it just has such a menacing presence to it, right? I mean, it's got this nice red paint. It's huge. Black accents, massive tires, these mirrors that I don't think I've ever seen a bigger mirror. And, no. they're, and they're power retractable. You press a button and they go in and out. Real nice, adjustable inside. We got three seat or two position memory here on the driver's side adaptive cruise control. I mean, all the amenities that would make a truck the most comfortable to drive on a long distance is in this truck. I mean, this this is an optioned out interior. This is an optioned out truck. So you're not gonna get much better than this. But with all that being said, on-road performance, excellent. Drives well to 10 speed. Right now I'm cruising at 60 miles an hour at like 1300 RPM. It's just such a comfortable truck. But we're gonna go see how it off-roads since that is what this is for. The Bison is for off-roading, right? That's what you're paying a lot of the money for. I mean, at the right. end of the day, even before the Bison package, I mean, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars in yep. off-road equipment over just an LTZ or LT, a non-off-road equipped truck. Yeah, so, I mean, this thing is really catered towards the off-road market. So that's why we're heading out to Johnson Valley. We're gonna go test out the Colorado ZR2 Bison as well as the 2500 HD Bison. Sometimes these press events can be a little tame, but I, uh, I'm i not seeing that. The fact they're going to Johnson Valley, when they said that you will use the jounce bumpers yeah. on the uh, on the Colorado, yep. that says a lot, I think. Right now we're cruising out. We're on top of this mountain right now. It's a pretty sweet view. Uh, overall, right now, we're not hitting anything too crazy for this. If anything, it's just showing its width, its uh, massiveness, the size of this vehicle. On some of these like little riverbeds that we've been going through, uh, you're gonna have to crawl up, put a wheel up on the side, and, uh, get on through, but if you had a smaller, more narrower vehicle, you could definitely squeeze through that, no problem. And you're definitely feeling on some of the big rocks, you're feeling the the heavy dutiness of this truck. It's definitely still a heavy, heavy duty truck. It's still meant to tow 18,000 um, pounds, but it's still very off-road capable. It just may not be as cushy as say the Colorado. Yeah, we haven't even touched really any of the, what they say, the goodies, right? Yeah. We haven't touched the locker. We're not in four low. 
Yeah. We are really just still at four high and just... Yeah, air down is really the only thing other than four high that we've done different. Uh, we were on a lake bed earlier just getting out to this hill or to this mountain. And one thing I will say about this truck is it handles washboard and um, just rough roads really well. So Incredibly like, well. Yeah, if you're up in the Pacific Northwest or anywhere, like I know California, Oregon, any forest service road, um, they're all going to be relatively similar. A lot of washboard because a lot of people take Subarus and front wheel drive vehicles on there and chatter up the hills and yep. all the turns. and. This thing will handle the washboard really well. Which, Incredibly well. Yeah. I was amazed of coming from HD trucks. Yeah. This is by far the best HD truck I've ever experienced. Yeah, and one thing, one issue with trucks I've always seen on washboard is it may handle it okay, but it seems like the back end wants to walk out on you. It almost like gets in this rhythm and loses its traction, and that back end just kind of wants to go its own way. Um, this, I have not felt that yet. It's definitely well. heavier than most trucks I've driven, but they say that, that those DSSV shocks are tuned to handle washboard well and keep the truck settled across it so it's not walking around not bouncing around this hill descent control is handling this very well so right now it's set to one mile per hour and anytime it sees it go over that one miles per hour it applies those brakes by itself right now i'm not even on the brakes or anything i'm fully off steering make sure this thing isn't careening off of the into a boulder what's great about downhill ascent control is that when you apply the brakes in a vehicle it applies brakes biasly but to all four wheels What's cool about hill descent control is that the hill descent control is looking at each individual wheel and the computer can electronically choose which brake it wants to actuate. And that's a huge advantage because when you're off-roading like this, you may need more brake pressure to a certain tire than to another one. Tire speeds may be different as you go over obstacles. Yeah. So it's really, really cool to see this in action working on something this, this, this is pretty rough terrain. I wouldn't take my own car on this. I'll tell you that. It uh, my downhill downhill control is uh, not working. It hasn't worked <laughs> in years. But uh, this is pretty pretty gnarly for a hundred thousand dollar truck. Oh, and there's those side rails. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big one. That's gonna come down. Oh, nice. Ooh, my head hit the side of that truck so hard. That is gnarly, dude. Yeah, that was rough. This is a very, very tough section. I'm very surprised they let us take these trucks on here because that really tested everything. It tested the hill descent control, the, the, <laughs> the power running boards. It tested. And I'm that. going slow. Like I'm not. I'm not being crazy. This is about as slow as I can go. And sometimes if you just pick the wrong line just by a few inches, it just rocks you. As you can see, Scott got shot and hit the side. I, I'll admit, we've tested the B pillar, it's yeah. sturdy. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna switch over to the Colorado. Overall, very capable truck. Uh, the heavy duty truck definitely is stiff, but it goes over obstacles very well. Washboard is where it shines. Uh, the big modulations, where they're spaced out just perfectly of the wheel wheelbase. You find that, the limit. That's where you find the limit. It's where you find where you can lift 4,000 pounds of engine up off the ground. Easily. Easily. And uh, the off-road pages we found, those were turned off in our display, and those are up on the center display. They are not on the infotainment system, they are on the gauge cluster area. So right now we're gonna switch over to the Colorado and see how that compares to the much larger 2500 HD. Scott, you ready for the Colorado? Dude, if it's anything as good as this, we're about to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. And this already off the bat is light years ahead of the 2500 HD. Granted, the 2500 HD has a purpose behind it, whether it be towing or off-roading, kind of walks the line of both but this is going to be primarily a majority uh of an off-road vehicle right this is you can tell the purpose number one is to off-road yeah so this is the bison by aev or the aev bison of the zr2 so what's different about this one we have aev front bumper rear bumper we have boron steel skid plates spare tire in the bed i don't know if that comes standard they didn't mention that but... i think that's an optional thing from chevy you can add at the dealer yep and then we also have we also have jounce shocks or uh, pretty much a fancy term for hydraulics. hydraulics. Yeah, hydraulic bump stops. So what that does is when you get to your full compression, it will engage the jounce shocks, which are uh, kind of there to save you when you go full compression. If you hit something too hard, it's there to save your butt and not, uh, not absolutely shatter your brain or your spinal cord, you know? Or brake components. Or brake components, yeah. The truck is definitely a, a worrisome component as it is a very expensive tool. But we are now in the Colorado it's handling what we're on right now incredible and uh, we're heading out to a technical section where they said there's a little bit of crawling 
right now the mode we're in we're in four high we're in baja mode when you switch over to baja mode on this center dial in the on the center console you have to accept baja mode because it turns your traction control and stability control off um, we are also aired down to around 22 23 psi so not only do we get the extra uh, plushness from the lower tire pressure it helps us with traction helps us with going over bumps and rocks and things like that and these are 35 inch tires so you do have a large diameter of a tire to go over rocks and ruts and whoops and things of that sort so it kind of fills in when there is a whoop having a 35 it's going to go through a little bit better than having a 32 or 33. one thing i want to point out about the zr2 bison or just the zr2 in general is that the the driver instrument cluster is a full screen there is no analog gauges it's very busy um, we have our trip we have 437 miles 17 miles per gallon down below that one we have our trip two to left we have our coolant temperature our speedometer all of our lights saying uh, what, what's turned off traction control things of that sort i mean there's so much information jam-packed on that screen i can see where it could be a little confusing you see what i mean it's, got, it's busy it's very busy um now when we stop i will go through some of the other options see if we can minimize some of those uh, things that are on that screen and see if we can make it more simplistic just to help with uh, quickly glancing down and seeing what you're doing because that's really when you're off-roading and you want to see something really quick and you just glance down i do find i'm sure you can get used to it after a long time of ownership or just driving the vehicle but as a new driver of this colorado zero two bison i can just look down and i'm confused a little bit there's just there's so much information to take in that you have to know exactly where to look Taking full advantage of the skid plates and the lockers. So, woo. Wow, that was a very tough section. That was no joke. Definitely with no spotters, there's no chance you're getting through there unless you are a professional. So I'm glad we had those spotters because there was a section where it was like no choice. You had to be on the sliders and on the skid plates no matter what. So thank goodness they had spotters and knew what they were doing because that was pretty intense. But overall, very capable vehicle. One thing I noticed is um, you really need to foot brake it and gas at the same time. That turbo seems to have a little bit of a ramp up so there's going to be a dead pedal and then it's going to start coming on to boost and then you're going to have a hard time kind of keeping a balance so if you just kind of brake boost it from my personal experience i find that that works a little bit better so very capable that's very impressive all right now on to a baja section so we just switched back into four high over into our baja mode and now baja mode has a select a uh acknowledgement little notification because it does turn on your traction control as well as your forward collision and all your safety things it turns it all off so if the camera seems a little bumpy it's because we're getting after it in the baja i am impressed that the zr2 bison handles like different terrain it can crawl it can also do some higher speed we haven't really gotten into the higher speed portion of this baja section but even just on this like little access like lake bed here this little wash i mean it handles the little like imperfections and uh washboardy sections really well so whoa that 2.7 turbo really kicks in once it grabs boost there's no question yeah there's definitely i feel the difference between this and the other i mean we haven't driven it on road yet we yeah. will when we go back but i uh i can i can kind of feel the difference between this and the mid power level of the last years hmm. yeah so we're just finishing up our day out here in johnson valley where we were testing out the colorado zr2 bison and the 2500 hd zr2 bison so we drove the HD out there, the ZR2 Bison HD out there, and got to feel its on-road presence and see where it stacked up against the base ZR2 that we drove yesterday while towing. So yesterday while towing, we got the uh, decibel readings of it cruising at 60 miles an hour and under full acceleration while towing the 8,000 pound trailer. We did that as well today, and we did that with this also. So we're driving this back to the hotel or back to Palm Springs, and we just tested the decibel reading. So cruising, we were around 65, 65.5 decibels. Cruising at 60 miles an hour, there is a little bit of a wind, so it may be just a tad bit louder than it would be without the wind. But under full acceleration, since this is a higher revving motor than that diesel, this is gonna be a little bit louder. So under full acceleration from 60 miles an hour up to about 75 miles an hour, revving to 6,000 RPM, 
we saw around 77 decibels, which is quite a bit higher. Quite a bit. Quite a bit higher than what? It was 73? Yeah, in that 73 in the 6.6. Yeah, yeah, in the diesel, the 6.6 .6 liter diesel. So quite a bit higher, which is very surprising. Um, but it doesn't really, I mean, it's, it's surprising, but it makes a little bit of sense because this is a higher revving motor. It's going to have less sound deadening because that diesel so loud that they're going to really emphasize their sound deadening on their firewall and any, anything around the cabin, making sure you don't hear that engine noise. So 77 decibels isn't too bad. It's definitely not loud or obnoxious in here. The engine actually sounds pretty good, revs out pretty high, and it's pretty responsive. Now, we also did a 0 to 60 test once we got back on the pavement, and we got anywhere from... 8.5 to 9 seconds depending on what mode we were in. We tested it in Baja mode in two-wheel drive where we had the launch control enabled. We revved it up up to 3,000 RPM, launched it, and we got 8.5 seconds to 60. And then we just did a normal mode, no launch control, and just brake boosted it. And we got a 9.5 second, which there was a slight uphill, so I'm going to knock like a 0.2 off of there. And I'd say 9.3 is where we're at. So I'd say cut it in the middle. We're also sitting at 90 degrees right now for outside air temperature and for a turbo motor that's not ideal right so if it's like 30 degrees it's going to be denser air and you're going to have more power overall this truck is not too loud given the fact that it does have a spare tire mounted in the bed of the truck right behind the cabin it has 35 inch mud terrains and also is lifted three inches over a stock colorado so it has pretty much everything working against it in the like drivability standpoint of making it a quiet truck but it still handles it pretty well and it's still a very drivable car you have adaptive cruise control, you have a massive GPS, massive infotainment screen, and you also have cooled seats, heated seats, as well as lumbar support and plenty of adjustment on the driver's side. How about the passenger side? Do you have power seats over there? No, no, we don't, we don't. We have manual and it pretty, it's pretty selective, kind of front, back, yep. and then uh, you have your backrest. Yep. And from what I'm feeling back there, that is the end of the options on yep. the passenger seat. So drivability is great. I would rate this truck on a drivability standpoint, on road, not off road, but on road. I would rate this, I'd say probably a seven, a uh, conservative seven. You know, it could be a little bit quieter. Obviously this is a, a truck on 35 so it's going to be a little bit louder but i'm just going to wrap that all in and it's going to uh, play against itself in that situation but i'd put it out of seven gives it room for improvement but overall a very drivable car if you wanted to go on a long road trip with your family granted it's a little bit small in the back but if you wanted to go on a road trip or go off roading overlanding as people call it uh, you're going to have plenty of comfort and plenty of adjustability in what kind of terrain you're going on so scott what do you think of this truck on road overall and then we'll talk about off road on road's a good place to be yeah but you know we jumped into the hd first yeah. which i think if we went the other way around you might think a little bit more but you get in that hd and it has every option of the sun again this is the mid-size segment so looking at it from mid-size comparing directly to let's say a tacoma trd off road let's say the tacoma is the standard i would say that yeah, i agree with you about a seven for this yeah. It's more comfortable, there's plenty of room. I don't feel, and I've been in this thing getting tossed around yeah. for hours now, yeah. and I'm still really comfortable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I had a lot of experience outside of like the journalist industry in the Tacoma, just mm -hmm. for personal reasons. And I do find that those seats get uncomfortable pretty quick. And I, I find that with the adjustability that I have, I can get the seat tilted in the right way with the lumbar support. And also the bolster is nice. It's not too narrow where it's not squeezing your, squeezing your, squeezing your cheek to your love handles. Uh, so it's it's pretty comfortable compared to the competitors in this market like the Tacoma. Now for off road, we just spent probably three to four hours off roading this vehicle, and we did some pretty gnarly stuff. Absolutely. Like, there was a couple spots where I was completely on my skid plates and completely on my uh, sliders on the side. So it's uh, glad we had those because without those, there would be immense damage. Now. There was some casualties out there. We got a running board that got ripped off on one of the trucks. Um, one of the guys ran straight over a boulder, didn't see it, drove straight over it. Um, yeah, when I came back, I saw a couple of the power running boards on the HDs bent and then one completely missing. And yep. you and I were lucky enough to witness that one get missing yeah, on the trail. Exactly, yeah. But for the Colorado, I mean, some of the terrain that we took this on, I think my in-car camera may have cut off just because of the heat. Pretty much is what what went on is some pretty technical rock crawling where we had the trucks in uh, the select crawl mode or terrain mode uh, in low for low with the lockers engaged on the majority of the section um, so pretty much everything that this truck can do off-road we did today so um, from crawling to Baja the camera was completely dead by Baja time yeah and there was a situation where we definitely caught air in this and uh, 
that was not on purpose. We were just going and it was very dusty. Once we kind of cleared out of the dust, it was just one of those situations where we, it was a little too late to brake and a little bit too late to accelerate and you just are in for the ride. Unfortunately, it rocked us a little bit, but the truck survived. There's no damage whatsoever. The joust bump stops helped immensely. I mean, if we didn't have those, it definitely would have been a lot more violent. So glad we had those hydraulic bump stops or the joust, uh, or what do they call them? Yeah, the hydraulic bump stops. Yeah, really glad we had the hydraulic bump stops. But the automate would have been painful. Uh, but again, vehicle isn't damaged. We're still driving home, drive straight. Now I did have a little bit of an issue when rock crawling, where I did hit a rock while turning. And that's gonna happen every once in a while when you are off-roading. And that just puts a lot of uh, stress on some steering components like your tie rod ends, your steering rack, and your knuckles and everything that's in the wheel area. I think it just puts a lot of stress on it. So I think, uh, I think we just threw a fault code, key cycled, came right back and never a problem again. So might've been just some fluke deal. And, and they did tell us these were pre-production ZR2s. Yep, yep. So there's gonna be some ironing out to do before it gets released. Yeah, overall off-road, very impressive vehicle. I do find that it handles washboard really well, which is gonna be in about 90% of what this truck is gonna be doing. Yeah. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people buying this and going on forest service roads. To get to some off-roading, we're gonna be doing some mild crawling, but I'd say majority of your time is gonna be spent on some washboard, especially if you're in the Pacific Northwest or on the West Coast. I can't speak for the East Coast because I've never off-roaded over there, but there is a lot of washboard on these dirt roads a lot on the west coast so handles that super well at 35s as well as the suspension the dssb suspension cruises right over the washboard with no problems and then once you do encounter some bigger whoops it handles it well until you find or you kind of get into a rhythm where the truck's length kind of fights itself and you find yourself launching the truck into the air uh thank you again to chevy for bringing us out to johnson valley in palm springs to test out the 2500 hd zr2 bison the zr2 the colorado bison as well as the zr2 and uh, overall awesome trucks super fun day really glad we got to come out here and uh, i'm looking forward to getting one of these trucks including the 2500 hd for a more in-depth review where we go over some dimensions and some more drivability aspects back home in washington you have fun oh dude yeah. A day out in the mountains. Yep. This is my favorite part about trucks like this, like ZR2s, is the whole time you're in them, you're smiling, you're laughing, and that's something that's special, right? Yeah. Like, you go out and you buy the non-ZR2 models, and they're great trucks. Yeah. But you get these, and you go out, and you're laughing the whole time, even with people we don't know. And yep. there is a lot of community that comes along with these trucks. And yeah. uh, I think that's my favorite part about them. This was an yeah. amazing experience. You're taking those HDs on terrain that I would never, I mean, 20 degree declines. I would never think of taking a one, no. a, a massive, massive machine with a long wheelbase, 35 inch tires. I would never take a vehicle like that. I was uh, got, just completely impressed. Yeah. There, the words don't describe when you're aiming a 8,000 pound truck down road and you there's just, another 8,000 pound truck down below yeah and yeah. there's something to be seen to see these trucks you would see at the job site wheeling yeah. like a jeep rubicon yeah but that is going to be it for today i am nick with auto buyer's guide and then scott birdsell here as a guest appearance for this trip really glad he was here definitely helped getting the footage and also i know he enjoyed off-roading oh, yeah. <laughs> off-roading some trucks so thanks for having me yeah for sure man it was definitely a lot of fun and until next time we'll see you guys then